Patients Out of Time, I first became familiar with about 10 years ago when I was beginning to explore the area of medical cannabis research, was looking, writing up grants and doing interviews with patients and beginning to explore this. And I became aware that there was this conference being held, I think it was at the University of Iowa, the first one. Um, I didn't have any f funding to get there, um, so I called them up and uh, I said, you know, the, can I have a, a video link up? Is there some way that I can dial into this to watch it from, from Montreal, where I was based? Um, and uh, was able to speak to McGill, and they lent me a, a room and a video screen and a, and, a, and a projector. And I watched the whole thing sitting in a room. There were three or four of us sitting in this room, watched the whole Congress. Uh, and I was amazed at the level of science and the stories and the patient's involvement. What I really liked was the patient involvement. Uh, and even today, when I gave my talk, I asked the room how many people were patients in the room, and, and over half the room were patients. Um, and most of the talks that I do, the conferences that I go, is working with the physicians and scientists, and, and it's really, really rewarding to speak to, to patients and to meet them afterwards and, and interact and, and, and get a sense from them and to see the level of interest they have in getting that knowledge. So I think, you know, I, I really, I like the patients out of time because of the patients that are in there. I think that's the, the critical piece for me and, uh, and I, I respect the work that Al and Mary Lynn are doing to, to keep that, that patient presence alive through all of this. I think it's motivated by the fact that the, the very first patient who told me that he used cannabis for medical purposes looked me right in the eye and told me that. And it, it struck me and I thought, wow, okay. And I believed him and I went away and, I, and, I, and as I said earlier, it's, it's still something where I believe strongly that we have to listen to that voice. I think for a long time the medical profession has kind of preached from on high and said this is what we think is right for you. Here we have, a, for various reasons, political, legal, whatever, um, a position where patients have come forward saying, this is working for me. And hearing those voices, hearing that, knowing that there's a, a bit of a barrier to the science, but knowing that it's overcomable, we can do it, um, that motivates me. And knowing that at the end of the day, a patient who has struggled with their physicians, struggled with uh, their family members because they, 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 they perceive this as being a drug of abuse or a substance or they're worried about it. If, if they feel somehow legitimized by the fact that there are doctors and scientists who are studying this and feel that it is a, a, a potentially useful therapy, if they feel reassured, if the family says, okay, well, maybe it's okay, and uh, then I think we've done a good, uh, a good service.